Oh yeah. I love the game. Yeah, yeah. I love the hustle. You know what time it is. You just tuned in to the most exclusive podcast. In the space, out of space, in the space, in your face. I need a meal a day. Mogul moves over. See money it coming, then money it goes. If I got oh, a yeah. man to make. My mama, she hey man, I got a real heavy hand in the building today, man. We're we gonna put so y'all up on game on this one. Gotta make me a meal a day. We're gonna help y'all take y'all careers to a whole other level on this one. Hey, hey. See money it coming, then money it goes. If I got me a meal to make. I need y'all to go ahead and tune in, man. Sit back, man. We're gonna drop this game on you. So I need a meal a day. Gotta get me a meal a day. Yo, 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 you just tuned in to the most exclusive podcast, Mogul Moves Only, with your boy Big D, the mogul, a.k.a. Suge Diddy, a.k.a. Illuminati Jack, a.k.a. Big Thanos, a.k.a. Heaven on Earth, a.k.a. Man, that's a, I, I be trying to come up with new a.k.a.s every <laughs> video to just keep going, man, but the Big Thanos was the last one I got since I, you know, I went to Infinity, saw Infinity Stones, man, and. I felt like his personality in a lot of ways remind me of myself, mm-hmm. but I mean, but me in more of a better way, not such a vindictive way, man. But I got my guy Michael in the building. Michael, man, I appreciate you coming in, coming in, take your time out of your schedule to come rock with me. For those who don't know Michael, man, Michael has an extensive background in, in writing and uh, with affiliations with name some of those affiliations you you work with, man. I've been writing and doing photography around Dallas for Dallas Observer, Central Track. I wrote a little bit for D Magazine. Recently, I started contributing to The Fader and uh, just really trying to, you know, talk about Dallas as much as I can with as many people as I can, you know? Okay, okay, okay. So, man, how how long have you been doing the whole, the, the writing and the photography? Uh, I mean, I went to college to be a journalist, you know, so okay. I've, been, I've been writing for a while. I graduated in 2013, so about five years I've really been working on hip hop writing and okay. photography and doing all that stuff out here. So it's, it's, I've got some you know, skins on the wall now and it feels pretty good, but uh, I'm just trying to, you know, keep going. Cause every day new music pops up and, and it's always, it's always um, a lot to keep up with. Okay. So before we get into the whole extensive and getting back to the college and you doing your write up and, you know, graduating in journalism and all of that, give us a little background, man, where are you from, where you grow up at, you know, things of that nature, music you grew up listening to. So, Let's let's talk about that. So, where you from, man? So, I'm from Fort Worth. Um, okay. From the funk. F- from the funk. Uh, my dad, uh, he he lived in Dallas, so you know I would spend a lot of time between Fort Worth and Dallas, and uh, just picking up the Observer. I was always reading about uh, you know all the music going on, but it was always a lot of metal music, you know. Okay. And so I know I saw a lot of local press, but not a lot of local hip hop press, but. As a kid growing up in Fort Worth, I was just obsessed with hip-hop. That's all I listened to. That's what was on the radio. That's what was on TV, and that's what I saw. So it was normal for me to, to just listen to Biggie and Tupac because that's what everybody was listening to. You know? right. And so I really grew up with it. But I feel like you know, as I was getting uh, older, you know, hip-hop was kind of a thing that people listened to to have fun, and, and maybe it was almost kind of funny to a lot of the kids that I was in class with. But for me... Every time I listened to hip hop, it just felt so real, you know, like I knew Facts. people, I knew people were telling stories and people were talking about their real life. It wasn't just party music, you know. And uh, once I recognized that, I, I, I kind of learned to appreciate it. And ever since then, that's where it's, it's grown, you know. OK, so at what point in, in did you decide like journalism was your passion and, and that was the route that you wanted to go? I mean, that's it. Journalism has always been so important to me. Uh, even when I was in high school, like as much as I love hip hop, I love sports too. And so football was huge and I was obsessed with football. I was one of those kids where I was just watching ESPN, part of the interruption, okay. like reading the newspaper. That's all I did. And so, um, you know, I knew that's what I wanted to do in school. And when I was in school, I was, I was writing about politics and I was writing about, you know, city stuff and just trying to like learn how to do journalism, you know. But that's not really where I wanted to go. And that's just not where I saw myself writing for years and years. And so uh, music is has always been there. And I feel like it's going to stay there. And so that's what I want to dedicate my life to, you know. You know what's funny? It's like growing up in grade school, like most guys, we always wanted to be like the athletes. Like you look, you look at the guys in the bands, you'd be like, oh, man, them, them the geeks. Don't nobody want to do with the bands. You look at the people that be doing like, oh, they 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 writing for the school newspaper, or they in journalism, or they in um um what you call it, student council or something oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. You be like, oh yeah. my god, them nerds. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody want to deal with them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's like either sports or you was 
you know, the fighter or something like that. But now it's crazy. Like when you get in the music business, don't catch that's in the band. It's the ones making these beats now. Yeah, you yeah. need them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Them people that you know you thought was the nerds and doing the journalism and the write-ups are now the journal the writers for the big publications mm -hmm. that help generate them buzz. You, you need them now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's that's kind of dope, man. So for all them kids out there that's in high school right now, and you talking about them cats that's in band, and you talking <laughs> about them cats in there doing them write-ups, man. You playing yourself. Because if you're going to try to be some type of writer, some type of artist, some type of business mogul, man, you're going to come back and you're going to need them people and they're going to laugh at you and be like, yeah, you remember all that trash you was talking down? Now you're out here bad, man. So tell us a little bit about the, the writing profession. Um, you graduated from what college again? Uh, I graduated from North Texas. Okay. So and UNT. UNT. Uh, moved to Dallas, but uh, writing, man, it's it's tough. It's tough. It's it's not the it's not the preferred media anymore. A lot of people want to do video. A lot of people want to focus on photos, and and writing is. It's, I don't want to say it's becoming a lost art because there's still people doing it, and there's still people doing it really well. But it's just not. It's hard to get a staff position, you know, right. a staff writer job, and it's a little tougher to t to do that in the hip hop world as well, you know. So, so, do you feel like the culprit of that is the internet, like so much digital and not so much, I guess, print anymore? Yeah, for sure. I mean, print product. I mean, it's it's dying, man. Like the advertising, it's moving online. People spending their time online. Like the print world is just struggling right now, and and that and because of that the first thing that goes is writers you know right. but luckily one thing that i've done to try to avoid all that is i write and i photograph you know okay. I make sure so that you, i'm bringing as much as i can to the table before absolutely. they let me go you know you know in my brief stint trying to play professional football in the nfl you know what i'm saying like how that works is they want the offensive lineman who can play guard, tackle, and center, not mm -hmm. just a person that's just good at guard or yeah. good at center. You yeah. want somebody that can play multiple roles at one time. So yeah. I guess that makes sense, doing more with less. Exactly. That's exactly how the media world is, man. Like, not only do you got to be able to, to network with people and know people, know what's going on in the scene, you got to be able to write the story, you got to be able to take the photos, you got to be able to edit your own story because mm -hmm. even editors are busier than ever, you know? And so the more that you can do, maybe you can, sometimes I help out, I publish the story, you know, I'll put it in the, in the website, format it, get it ready and just do as much as I can so that I'm making sure they know that value's there, you know? Absolutely. So like you, you name a couple of pros and cons, but what's some more pros and cons for aspiring writers who are looking to get into the, the writing game into some type of publication, primarily, let's say entertainment to keep it kind of in a niche, but what are some of the pros and cons of being a writer or trying to get on as a writer? Yeah. I mean, think about it, man. Like, that's your job. You get to write about entertainment. You get to write about what you love. I mean, if you love music and you get to write about it, I mean, how, how great is that? Absolutely. You know? I mean, do what you love. That's what everybody always says, right? When you, when you grow up, do what you love. Make You know, if you, if you commit to your passion, it's not going to feel like a job, you know? Facts. And so I feel like that most of the diet, most of the time. It gets a little tough sometimes where it does feel like a job, but... Then I'll have an experience where I just do something that I know is not common. Like I know that a lot of people don't get to experience a behind the scenes move or they don't get to talk to a rapper before they blow up or, you know, right. they, they don't get to be the first one to talk to that person. And so just, you know, you're going to meet people that are super interesting. You're going to come across stories that, I mean, you never would have thought of. I mean, you're mm. going to meet people that take you to other people and take you to other places and, you just never know where it goes, you know? And so that's one of the best things about writing is that you don't always know what the story's going to be. And, I mean, that's – it's just – it's a great ride. So what's some of the cons that you feel about the the, uh, the writing business or becoming a writer, I guess? I would say it's tough. I would say writing is not something that everyone is naturally good at. I mean, you can – even if you're a natural storyteller and you can talk to someone and, and tell a story and, you know, talk about something that happened at a crazy party and you're a good storyteller, you may not be able to translate that to a page. You okay. may not be able to start writing. You know, some, it's just you get that mental block. You get that insecurity about the creativity. You get, you know, am I going to get this wrong? Like, what if, you know, you got to be able to handle the criticism. And sometimes you start thinking about, like, as, you, as I write stuff, sometimes I think about – what someone could criticize about oh. and so it, it keeps me honest and it, it's good but at the same time it's it, it can add some insecurity you know and so writing is a tough process and I think uh, that's one of the, the biggest hurdles for a lot of people and not to you know make any assumptions but I think it's a little easier to pick up a camera and start taking pictures than it is to sit down and try to write some stories okay you know? so it's I mean it's just a long process so take us through like the process 
in, you know, in, in, in your writing. So like, like for example, selecting, I guess, take us through the process when it comes to selecting your write-ups on the way. I mean, I guess selecting your write-ups all the way to the street. So how do you pick what you're going to write about once it's done? What other, what other channels do it have to go to before it gets print right out to the streets, whether it's print publication or digital? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm, I keep my eye on as much as I can through social media, you know, okay. uh, I'm, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and I'm just making sure that I'm trying to keep up with all the people that I know are doing really good work, like the people who are creating good art. And then just keeping up with that, reading as many publications as I can, reading as many blogs as I can, just so I have, I continue to have a sense of what's going on. And by this point, I've written so many stories and I've reached out to a lot of people that it's, it's a little easier to do it these days, you know? Okay. And so once I find something or I, I, uh, like I come across a song that I really like and it just, it just sounds a little unique. It sounds a little different than what I've heard. I'll reach out to that person and be like, Hey, you know, like, uh, you have an album coming out or, you, you know, you're like, are you new to music? Like how, you know, cause I may not know them, you know? Right. And so I just kind of reach out and just talk to them and then I'll try to figure out if there's something a little unique about their story, you know? And if there is, then, I mean, I'll, I'll go to my editor and be like, hey, I found this song, you know, it's like this, it, it, it's from this person, it's a little different because of this and that, and, and I think it's worth checking out. And so usually from there, you know, it's either green light or red light. And uh, if, if it's red light, then I try to talk to that person and, and say, you know, as you're making this music, what is unique about it? Okay. Or what's unique about your story? What would interest somebody and what would make them want to learn more about you after hearing your music, you know? Absolutely. Because a lot of people, I mean, they get in the mode of making music and putting music out and kind of just hoping that one's going to catch on and one's going to become like Go that. viral. Exactly, just. yeah. But, you know, do you know who you are and do you know your story? Do you know your path? And is that like relevant to you? So how often, like you said, so you can do a write-up. You can select the artist and you can say, hey, think you dope or I like what your movement is you can create this write-up but can still get blocked by the editor yeah it happens it's, it's it's pretty rare and it's usually only because like you know it could be a budget issue it could be a time issue it could be uh you know I want I think it's a bigger story and they okay. may think it's a smaller story and so kind of you get caught in those little battles um I mean sometimes it's hard just bringing certain hip-hop artists to publications you know wow. Um, I mean, I know that when I was uh, moving to Dallas and, and observing, you know, different publications, not a lot of publications write about hip hop. Right. And then even if they do write about hip hop, it's a certain kind of hip hop. Right. You know, Maybe like the backpack rappers or more like the experimental hip hop. So artists, they try you know? to stay away from, the, I guess, the quote unquote typical hip hop, because I mean, the. Uh, the, the drug or the, the gun, the violent. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the greediness, you know, because it's just not their market, you know. I mean, it's they're trying to, you know, the, the publication's full of ads to, to bars and restaurants and stuff like that. And so a lot of, some publications shy away from, you know, the, the honesties of hip-hop, you know, like right. the realities of hip-hop. And, uh, I mean, that's part of people's stories, you know. Not everyone has a, a real clean cut. And, you know, I just started rapping because I like rap, and now I'm a rapper. Like, usually there's a, a real background there, and there's a real story, and there's a real there's a reason why they're talking about this stuff, and there's a reason why they're letting it out, you know. And it, it's because it comes from real places, and sometimes people don't want to see those real places. So, for the, the those who are listening, and I, I think we may have said this in the beginning, but I just want to reiterate, again, name some of the publications that you work with or work for or whatnot. Or yeah, so uh, I contribute pretty regularly to the Dallas Observer, Central Track, and uh, recently I just started contributing to the Fader, but, I mean, I'm open to pitching to as many places as I can. It's just establishing those relationships. So, I'm going to dance around a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you how is important is how important is it for an, an artist to establish a relationship with writers or you know or whatnot? You know, I would say it's important to just keep all relationships open. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, you know, being a hip, being an artist, a music artist is tough. There's a lot of moving parts. I mean, you gotta have you gotta have relationships with producers, with engineers, with lawyers with you know, media uh, you know venue owners it's just I mean, you just be open to relationships in general you know um you know I, there's no reason to, to feel like you gotta kiss a writer's ass or, or, or pay a writer i mean it, you shouldn't have to pay a writer i've never taken a payment like i'm i'm doing journalism you know? okay I'm, I'm telling the truth i'm telling stories 
And uh, if I come across a, an artist with a t- with a story to tell and some good music to back it up, like there's there's nothing else beyond that. You don't have to be best friends. You don't gotta you know buy me dinner. There's there's no games about it. You know, it's just it's purely about you know what's your story and are you making good music? Okay, so let's say I'm an artist. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like I got a song that's popping. How do I go about getting to a writer? Um, what are some of the avenues or some of the ways to catch a writer's attention to, you know, try to have that, sh- to shoot that shot to say, hey, I need, write about me. I, I'm, I got something going on here. Yeah. First off, that's the most important thing. Shoot your shot. <laughs> Just okay. let it, let it be known that you want media attention. You know, uh, okay. sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll write about an artist cause I, I, I found them through this way or that way. And, and I wrote this story and then one of their friends was like, yo, what about my music? And I was like, wow, I like that. So I wrote about that way. And then someone that I've never heard of and just haven't come across will, will be mad and be like, yo, what's up? How come you haven't written about me? And it's like, yeah. it's the simple fact that I just don't know who you are. And it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that you're not big enough. It doesn't mean that I'm too big. It, do, it doesn't mean that I'm not paying attention. It's just sometimes people haven't connected yet, you know? And so uh, just recognizing that and, and not being shy about sending out an email, you know, sending a DM on Twitter or Instagram, something like that, something as simple as that just reaching out and, you know, if we don't get back, it's because there's a lot of people who do that. And sometimes we don't always keep up with our DMs and sometimes we're not as, uh, you know, active as we, as we want to be uh, writing in, in, our, in our email. But just be patient and, and maybe read the publication. That works. Okay. So read, read the Dallas Observer, read Central Track, read your favorite hip-hop blogs, read the, read the stuff that you want to be on and see if it's a good fit. And then, I mean, l- just take a look at the writers' names and, you know, take a look at the, who the writers are, See if you can find the editors, see if you can find an email, anything, and then go about it. You know, I have a website. You can go to my website and, you know, get my email, my phone number. You can go to Twitter, DM and me, shoot whatever. Out, shoot out, while we're on that, shoot out your website, your Twitter, your Instagram, I mean, your social media handle so people can find you. It's just my name, Michael Galicia, M-I-K-E-L-G-A-L-I-C-I-A. It's a little tough to find. I know nobody's <laughs> going to remember that, but that's where I am. And... uh yeah, I mean, it's 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 just real as simple as reaching out, man. Just, you know, have patience and just know that it's not a be-all, end-all. If you get that story, if you get the, you know, the relationship, that doesn't mean you're going to be an overnight success. You know, it's just another piece in your, you know, your journey to becoming a star. So give us a little bit of a background, a little bit of the Dallas Observer, Central Track, mm-hmm. and Fader. For those who aren't familiar with those publications, mm-hmm. Give, a, I guess, a little bit of background. You don't have to go extensive, but just a little introduction, icebreaker for those. Okay. Right? Uh, I mean, let's start off with Central Track because that's where I started. Um, <clears throat> Pete Friedman, he gave me my start. Uh, he really, you know, opened me up to the local hip-hop scene when he was writing at The Observer, and then he started his own blog. And uh, the great thing about Central Track is it's it's, it's – there's no nowhere near as many restrictions as there are other publications. Okay. I mean, it's an, it's an alternative. It's online. I mean, there's very few – you know, restrictions. And so we can tell a lot of good stories and, 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 and make a lot of things happen that maybe wouldn't happen other places who are a little more bound by their markets. Um, uh, but the observer, you just can't deny the, the reach of the observer of the observer. And, uh, it's, they have a massive audience and I think it's just important for the observer to recognize a lot of the hip hop talent in the city. And so that's been my mission is to write, a, try to write about as much as many artists as I can while maintaining my sanity at the Absolutely. same time. But, um, it's tough because, you know, they have budget restrictions and there's a lot of other genres of music. It's not just hip hop, you know. And then um, uh, recently I started writing for The Come Fader. On. You good. So recently I contributed two pieces to The Fader and uh, that's been pretty good. You floating in. You good. <laughs> hey, it scared the hell out of me. They're doing balls. This is all the camera. Like, Who's that? Appreciate it. You ain't get you no food? You just got you some fruit snacks? I mean, some people just too good for a free meal, man. I appreciate you. Okay. So, I, I tried to get, um, did you say Pete? Is that his name? Yeah, Pete I, yeah, I tried to get him on. Mm-hmm. I know he was kind of busy. for At least for the date I was trying to get him okay, on. Yeah. He was just like at a later date. But I'm going to definitely try to get him on again. Yeah. Um, being in a, a visual world, Right now, you know, a lot of people are looking for, looking to podcasts, uh, looking to videos, looking to interviews and things of that nature. How has the internet changed? You know, the um, 
the writing game, I guess, and where do you see writing in the future? I mean, the great thing about the internet is it's the ultimate equalizer. I mean, everyone has a shot. Everyone has the same opportunity. There's no difference between NewYorkTimes.com and YourBlog.com. Like right. it's, it's just a website, right? And so if you can create good content and you can, you can write well and take good photos, I mean, that goes a long way. And, you know, use the Internet to, to find ways to get in contact with people. You know, like I was saying earlier, establish those relationships. Like I, I establish a lot of relationships through Instagram and Twitter. That's it. Just simply follow someone, you know, interact with them, let them know who you are. And, and once they see how, you know, you keep up with them and, and um, that relationship matters, Absolutely. It, it, it means something. And so just um, just try to get out there. Man, I forgot what the question was. No, it, it, the question was, is the, the change, how has... Oh, the internet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's the equalizer. I mean, everyone has an opportunity. And so use the, use the opportunities you have. Like, follow them on Twitter, message them, send them an email, because you never know who's going to respond. You never know what's going to happen. The only thing that can happen is you hear no or you hear silence. But that's it. And you, you don't, you don't want to wonder, well, I mean, I, I could send this email to so-and-so. I could do this. I could do that. I mean, don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy. Like, everyone's going after the same thing. Everyone's just trying to accomplish their goals, you know? And if you feel like they can help you, I mean, why not, right? I, yeah, that's true. So I see Central Track does, like, the ranking or, like, the, uh, the buzz report, mm -hmm. kind of, like, who's moving up in, like, the buzz world, who's yeah. descending, yeah. things of that nature. How do they come up with and how do they decide who's... So uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they, they ended that a little bit, but uh, when they when they had the buzz rankings going, it was basically a survey of all the publications. Uh, and so uh, it's just taking a look at Dallas Morning News or Guide Live or, you know, Observer, D Magazine, just seeing who's getting the buzz or even Twitter. If, you know, local Twitter's going crazy, then, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a good thing for an artist, right? And so that was the idea behind the buzz rankings. So, so they got rid of that? This? Uh, I think it's just uh, I don't. I mean, I don't know, man. Two thousand fourteen, fifteen. That was, that was big. It was yeah, like, it, the, yeah. It was. It's big, and and it, I mean, I don't know. It's a good thing, but uh, it's, I'm not sure where it went. How tough is it to get? Because Fader is huge. Mm -hmm. You know, Fader Fort be doing anything in South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. Fader is huge. Is there is there a lot of more red tape to publish via Fader or? I mean, I haven't experienced that yet. Uh, the first piece that I did for them was they wanted to know about what was going on in Dallas. Yeah. And so they, they were doing a column, and it's basically a road trip. And they're okay. going from market to market. And uh, they said that they wanted to learn more about, you know, anywhere. And so I emailed them and told them, hey, Dallas has a flourishing rap scene. There's yeah. a lot of activities, a lot of great stuff going on. And uh, I really want to write about it, and I really want to tell that, forever, you know, tell that to your audience. And luckily, they were down. Um, and I had to windle down my list to five, and that was tough. But um, it was—it's a good look. But I didn't—I didn't come across any red tape. I feel like they're—they're, they're, you know, Fader's one of the ones that gets it right. Right. They understand hip hop. They respect hip hop, and uh, I'm glad to be a part of that. And I got to, you know, I get to talk about Yellow Beezy coming from South Dallas and getting past any barriers that most hip hop artists come through the, in the city. You know. Do, do you feel like Yellow Beezy is the biggest artist out of Dallas right now? I, if you want to talk about right now, Other, it's the, Excluding, don't say part was Post Malone. Oh, you no, 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 I wouldn't, okay. no, I wouldn't. Um, yeah, that's a different situation. But, I mean, Yellow Beezy's got a thing going on right, right. now. I mean, it, you can't deny it. Like, I mean, you listen to K104, 97.9, they're going to play both his songs within that hour. Like, Absolutely. It's, it's a beautiful time right now. But it's hard to ignore Asian Doll. She just signed a 1017. Gucci Mane yeah. has her on the roster. Like, I mean, that's amazing. Cuban Doll's doing yep. amazing things. Um, I mean, the buzz that Tay K had last year is, yep. is just wild. I mean, that's just an amazing story. Because me and Pooh was talking about that. Who yeah. who were big? Who had the bigger buzz mm -hmm. between Asian Doll and Yellow Beezy and Cuban? And I, I was like, I don't. I see. I was like, I see Yellow Beezy. He's doing his thing. Definitely mm -hmm. popping. Yeah. But, you know, so I guess I see Asian Doll and Cuban traveling more nationwide, doing more shows. But he was like, but Yella is doing the same thing. I guess I I said to, to Yella Defense, I haven't I'm not following them. Yeah. So I can't see that. But I'm not really I'm not even following Cuban Doll or Asian either. But I think the I think the difference is just seeing the way they're doing it. I mean, if you look at Yella Beezy, I feel like he really came from that old school grassroots type movement you know you know he had his music in the t-town he was moving you know mixtapes and just you know 
the, you're going to you're going to hear that's on me ringing from cars like that's Absol- it's just absolutely his his fans are in South Dallas his fans are in Dallas like absolutely. you're going to hear it and that's the radio caught on and then other markets you know start playing the song because it's doing well in Dallas you know and so and then he started traveling to where those songs were being played and it's just it was a very old school classic uh roadmap that he took you know? and i feel like asian doll cuban doll you know diego money those those, those artists diego yeah. they're taking the the internet route you know and Absolutely. so they're they're getting on instagram getting on twitter and like i was talking about earlier connecting with people in, in other cities going to those cities hanging out with them taking their their friend becoming friends with their friends and, and developing that network and going city to city i mean i see it every week like Asian doll would be in Chicago with a gang of people. It should yep. be in LA with a gang of people, Atlanta. And it's just like in recording studio here, recording studio there. It's just that like traveling and getting your face out there and establishing those relationships, you know, and there, there's two ways to go about it. There's the yellow, yellow busy route and the, the Cuban doll route. And it's, it works either way. You just got to put in the amount of work that they're putting in. So right now, so who are your top five Dallas artists right now that you really just rocking with? Man, this is like a super tough question, but uh, that's what I we're mean, here for. It's a little easier just because I just wrote an article about this, but I mean, it's impossible to deny what Yellow Beezy's doing. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, it's 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 a it's an amazing thing. Tye, I think he is Dope. a gifted mind. Dope. Uh, I mean, you want to talk about beyond hip hop? I think he's just a gifted mind. Like his his music, his album Thirty Two, his debut album. I mean, it's from from beginning to end, it's unique, it's theatrical, it's it's powerful. It, I mean, it'll it'll just it'll make you think about whatever you're going through in your life, and yeah. just know that you know it, other people go through it. And uh, I, I respect his craft. Um, Let's see. Uh, see, this is where it gets hard, man. I mean, outfit forever. Okay. Um, I mean, I. I mean, Mel, Jayhawk, Dorian, been their in icons. Work, putting in work for a minute. They've been putting in work for a minute. They deserve everything they've accomplished, and they deserve everything they're gonna get. Because I mean, they're. I mean, the time and energy that they've put in for for Dallas and in their craft. Like, I mean, it's it's. I respect the hell out of that. Um. Flex and Fab is doing really well. I mean, I know that a lot of people kind of get caught up in the clout rapper type right. aesthetic and maybe people make assumptions, but man, I really, I, I mean, I know him on a, on a decent level and I feel like his work ethic is, is pretty, pretty rare. I mean, I know he's in the studio all the time and a lot of his music is freestyling. It's very old school. It's very Lil Flip-esque, you know, that SUC, you yeah. know, it's just, it's just that Texas flavor and I love that. And then, um... I don't know, man. Then from there, it's just a lot. And we got Bobby Sessions, Lord Byron. And, and, and shout know. out to Bobby. I saw Bobby last yeah. yesterday at Brick mm-hmm. Party, man. Shout out to Bobby. I hope that situation works well for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's definitely a good look, man. And I'm hoping one day I can get him on and hear, hear him talk about that experience. But, yeah, shout out Bobby Sessions. It, it's beautiful, man. And and it's what everyone's been wanting, right? Everyone, everyone acts like it can't be done. Everyone's... Saying you got to go to New York, you got to go to L.A., you got to do this, you got to do that, and I mean Bobby did it homegrown, you know. Same but he way. still had to go to New York to sign the contract. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, know? you still got to go to, to New York yeah, at some but, point. We, now you don't to, need to go to New York to pop. Yeah, you, you don't have to go to New York to pop, but I mean you got to go to New York for the meeting or to sign the contract. But I mean he built his career here, you know. I mean he was doing his own, he's throwing his own shows, generating buzz around those shows, putting out quality work with the videos to match. I mean just. You know, you said you saw him last night at Brick's Block Party. I mean, that's the stuff you got to do. You got to yeah. show your face. You got to be a part of the scene. You got to show that, you know, you care. And all that stuff adds up. And, Absolutely. And for him, you know, look what it's added up to, a Def Jam contract, you know. So right now, who, if you had the name, who are your top three artists of all time? Of uh, all time? No matter what the genre is, your top three. We're talking music? Music. Oh, man, that's, that, that's tough. Um, let's see. Man, for me, um, I mean, I don't know, man. That's a tough one. I mean, if we're talking hip hop, like for me right now, like Lil Wayne is really, okay. is really, is really a part of my life. Uh, okay. If you think about his career, he's been around forever, man. And so since I was like eleven, he's been okay. he's been a part of my life. And so all the mixtape he's put out, and all the work he's done, and all the influence he's had, like, and and just all the just how important he is to the culture and to hip hop, like. I respect the hell out of Lil Wayne, and, like, he's one of my... I mean, just when you asked me that question right there, like, he's the one that popped up, right? But then, uh, you know, outside of hip-hop, there's a guy named Jesse Lacey. He's, okay. a, he's a writer uh, for a band called Brand New. 
Uh, if you want to talk about, you know, getting to know yourself and, and, and really looking inward, uh, Jesse Lacey, he's, he's really, you know, good at that. And then uh, three, uh, who knows, man, let's just say outcast. Okay, <laughs> yeah. there you go. I, so I guess my three would be Andre 3000. Mm-hmm. Then, in no particular or- order, but Michael Jackson. Yeah. And Kenny Chesney. The country singer? Yes. Okay. Well, me and my lady had a first big fight, okay. so we'll drive around to yeah. us all in the neon. Like, that's my joint. Yeah. The good stuff. Yeah. I can feel Yeah, because it's just, you know, does it resonate with you, you know? It, it may, you know what? That song was the first country song I learned. So I went to a predominantly white college, Bowling Green State University in mm-hmm. Ohio, and we was getting destroyed in football camp. Mm-hmm. And the good stuff somehow was the song that got me through every single day. Them 21 days or two days was... Terrible, yeah. But I don't know the good stuff, man. It got me through. Yeah, and that those are the songs that end up meaning the most, right? The yeah. ones that get you through whatever that is, whatever you're going through. And and for me, Jesse Lacey hits that. Little Wayne hits it at some point. I mean, he's, you know, I feel like dying. Like that's like it's just you know sometimes you get low and 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 it's like that that, that helps you yeah, know absolutely. just know that other people are feeling that way. And then it, on the other spectrum, it's happy and, and it's all great, you know, and everybody has that. And so it's, uh, I feel like those three artists for me hit the same, hit the, the same marks. Who do you think is a big artist right now? And we had this debate, Beyonce or Drake? Man, um, I don't know. I mean, just, it's hard for me not to say Drake, just to see every time I'm opening a, a you know, Every time I get on Twitter, it's, he broke a new record, 10 billion streams, most streams in 24 hours. It's, his album's, you know, triple platinum already. Right. Like, not only is he selling like crazy, I mean, he's resonating with people, like God's plan. Look at that. I mean, that video is pretty impactful. Absolutely. You know? And it's nothing against Beyonce's Lemonade. I mean, that's, you know, formation's just as great, right? And just as affecting. But uh, for some reason, uh, I mean, it's not a fair argument. <laughs> they're, they're both great, but it's so, hard to say Drake's not on top of, a Michael lot. Jackson versus Drake. Do you think Drake has a chance to compete to be one of the greatest artists of all time? With Michael well, Jackson? it's for me. There, it's it's no one compares to Michael Jackson, man. Like Michael Jackson is as unique. You as can't it do that. Gets. This is like, we we're, we're having right now this LeBron versus Michael Jordan yeah, yeah. conversation. Yeah. Today you have to take a stand. Yeah. Who's going? Who's the biggest artist? Michael Jackson or Drake? Michael Jackson, like. For me, it's no question. Like, Michael Jackson will go down in the annals of history, like any history. Like, civilizations thousands of years from now are going to be like, look what this dude was doing yeah. during the Super Bowl. Like, look what he did for culture. Look what he did in, like, I mean, just he impacted everything. He was the Beatles, like, on a different scale, you know? And Michael Jackson made grown women, grown men, and babies all pass out and cry at their concert. Everyone. I mean, he was Free Willy. He was the soundtrack to Free Willy. Like, <laughs> he impacted everything. I mean, he was Pepsi. He was this. He was that. Like, Michael Jackson is a phenomenon that I don't think anybody will touch. And I'm sorry, Drake, but I mean, I feel it. It's nothing against Drake, right? But uh, Michael Jackson is honestly one of a kind. So let's circle back. So just to kind of. And just to kind of break down some pointers from the artist. So if we can give like a couple of steps, maybe three to four steps, what steps should the artist take to reach out to a publication? What's some things they need to have in order first? And then once they have it in order, what do they need to do in order to try to reach out and get placement on a publication? Um, I mean, first, I would say focus on your craft, making sure that, you know, your music is as 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 good as you want it to be making sure that your songwriting is as sharp as you want it to be making sure that you're putting in the effort making sure you're you're recording sound good making sure you're just establishing relationships in the city beyond just looking for media because i feel like if people just start and this goes for anybody but we're talking about you know artists you you got to put in the work to get the rewards you know and so but for music and rap in general sometimes i feel like people do feel like they can just splash in they can just put put out one song and let it go viral and then try to build off that and that's the that's some people's game plan but the real ones who are having the the real legitimate success and the long-term success like it's it's a process absolutely you got to trust the process you know embrace the process and i feel like if you're putting in the work and you're doing the recording and you're doing the shows and you're doing the networking and all that stuff 
you're gonna you're either gonna gain media attention, the media is gonna find out about you, or it's gonna be that much easier to reach out to the media because you can have evidence of your work. You can say, here's my album, here's this, here's you know, here's some shows that I'm doing. Come out to a show, you know, you want to come listen to my album, you know, this, you know, anything. And but I think the product has to be strong. You know, it's it's you know, there are people who get caught up in the aesthetics or, or whatnot, but uh, for, a, for me as a writer like, and a photographer, I'm really looking for, is there a lot of substance? Is there a story there? And I feel okay. like Dallas is r- like rich with that kind of talent. And so it's been easy for me to, to write about a lot of people, but, um, I would say that's the most important thing is just trust the process. So that's what it is. So if I'm hearing you correctly is number one, f- like you said, focus on your craft, mm-hmm. you know, come together, make great music. Mm-hmm. What makes it even better if you have a great story mm-hmm. to tell behind that music. Yeah. And then lastly, the biggest thing is to ask. Shoot yeah, your just shot. Just ask. Just ask. Shoot your shot, man. Just let it be known that you're interested. Some people act like they're too cool, you know? Like, there's nothing wrong with reaching out. I reach out to people. But, you know, no so, is hard sometimes. Yeah. Rejection yeah. is hard rejection sometimes. Is, rejection is the hardest thing to go through in life. I mean, it's, you, you know, get rejected for jobs. You get rejected for, you know, dates. You get rejected yeah. for, you know whatever homes you know it's just you know rejection is a part of life right and so as an artist you're gonna have to embrace that because you know maybe your songs are gonna get rejected by radio your songs are gonna get rejected by your friends your songs you know whatever but i'm telling you if you keep it's just i went through the same process for myself like my writing was not good in the beginning but i had an editor who worked with me and my photos weren't great but i just kept working on it and getting better and it's true for everyone and so the more you work on your craft the less you're gonna have to worry about earning attention because it's just gonna it's gonna happen when you know you you make yourself too great to ignore you know and that's that's what happens to a lot of people is you just get so good that they can't be ignored any longer there you go so we're gonna go to this next segment man so since you big into the hip-hop culture i feel like what's your what's your nationality hispanic hispanic yeah, yeah. okay what's that you that's you, mexican you, spanish okay a little, 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 blend bit, of little both. bit both okay yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So navigating in this hip hop culture, man, you mm-hmm. have to be able to navigate this culture with your black car, man. <laughs> okay. So I'm a, we got this game that shout out to Toya for introducing this game to me. It's called Black Car Revolt. But we since you're, we trying to get your black car to prove. So <laughs> okay. we about to try to put you on game. So I'm gonna ask okay. you a series of questions. Okay. You answer a question, you get it right. We're gonna All do right. about five questions. Okay, let's go. If you can get these questions right, man, you'll get your black card, <laughs> and you'll be so, you'll be solid in every hood. All right? all right. I feel like I'm already pretty good in a lot of hoods. So, but now you're gonna see. be honorary black, okay, and that's gonna okay. even be better. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. they mogul approved. There you go. <laughs> so here it is. First question: Jerome from Martin is a player from the Himalayas. There we go. <laughs> Bow, baby. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, this is history. In what city did Rosa Park refu- refuse to move to the back of the bus? Was it Tuskegee, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, or Jackson, Mississippi? Ooh, I'm going to say Montgomery, Alabama. Bam, baby. We okay. almost there. You getting darker every time. <laughs> okay. This might be a tough one. This is a movie. Okay. Approximately. This is from Color Purple. You ever saw Color Purple? I have not seen a Color Purple. Oof. Well, I'm going to hope it's about Oprah. It, it, but she's in. She, yeah, I know. This is her the character. question's about Oprah. <laughs> okay. Approximately how long did Sophia have to fight? Five minutes, all night long, all her life, or D never? I'm going to say all her life. There you go. Bow, <laughs> man. We, we almost there, man. We're this all man, fighting. Hey, bro, your hair's starting to nap up a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We well, almost there. According to Mama... What does it mean if your ears keeps itching? You need to wash. Someone is talking about you. You need to see a doctor or you're about to fall in love. Someone's talking about you. Bam, man. <laughs> hey, man, let's get this man. Hey, we about to get you some Jabot jeans, <laughs> some Timberlands. Like my hair starting to get waved. Hey, man, you there, man. Them 360s is popping. Last one. According to mama, what does it mean when your hands are itching? I mean, what does it mean if your hands is itching? You got a debt to pay. You're about to lose your hand. You need to wash your hand. You coming into some money. 
Mm, I'm going to say coming into some money. Man, there you go. <laughs> bow, baby. Ding, 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 ding. Hey, man, Michael, man. You is that five for five? That's five for five, hey, man. man. Get this, this man is now you officially <laughs> black. You are now, not only are you Hispanic, but you're now African-American. Honorary. Hey. African-American, man. Right. Welcome to the club. Thank you. Welcome to the struggle. Thank you. Be right. careful getting pulled over. <laughs> that, that's so, already been scary enough. There, there you go, man. But, hey, I appreciate you, man, really coming out, dropping this knowledge, man, on mm-hmm. our viewers. I think publication is something that's very, very important for artists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Getting out there, generating buzz. Yeah. Again, guys, like you said, man, make sure you ask. Yeah. But before you ask, come ready. Yeah, come ready. And that's the most important thing, man. I mean, like, if you're a journalist and you're a writer, you want to do this. You want to write stories. And, I mean, sometimes we get busy. Sometimes we take breaks and whatnot. But when it's there and we see it, like, it's impossible to deny it. We want to tell these stories. But you got you to gotta have a story. You got to have some quality music. It's got to be a little different. And you got to be really serious about it. No doubt, man. Well, this is another episode of Mogul Moves Only with your boy Big D, the mogul, a.k.a. Suge Diddy, a.k.a. Illuminati Jack, a.k.a. Big Thanos. Before we get out, again, Michael, tell everyone where they can reach you at if they want to, you know, go to your website. Can you shoot out the website one more time? Yeah, for sure. It's just my name, uh, Michael Galicia, M-I-K-E-L-G-A-L-I-C-I-A.com. Uh, I mean, check out The Observer. Check out Central Track. I've probably written an article there or Google uh, top five Dallas rappers to watch, and I think something might pop up. And what about IG and Twitter? Same thing. Okay. Just, just my name. Uh, I gotta get a, I gotta get an easier name or some kind of cooler. No, no that's cool. Cooler man. handle. <laughs> hey man, we going Your name is Jamal. Now that you got your official <laughs> black card going for your name is Jamal. I'm glad to be mo- mogul approved. Man. Hey man, and then this is again we out. Big D mogul mogul moves on. Thank you. I need a meal a day, gotta make me a meal a day See money it come and then money it go If I got me a meal to make My mama she hit up my line and she say baby I got some bills to pay So I need a meal a day, gotta make me a meal a day I need a meal a day, gotta make me a meal a day See money it come and then money it go If I got me